Jay, David mentioned, uh, when you mentioned it, I'm not sure, but that you're going to start this week. <coughs> so I think that the rotation was going to be a thing. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, me and Dave had a conversation uh, at the start of the tour, and he mentioned that he was going to give all of us a crack in the first three games. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for the opportunity against Italy. Uh, wind back the clock to 2018, made my debut here, so I have pretty fond memories. So I'm, I'm excited for the weekend. What are your reflections on that week? And a good win too, to boot. Yeah, uh, I remember when Czech told me it was, uh, I guess, a mix. I was quite nervous when he first told me. I thought I'd get a few minutes off the bench, wind up starting the game. And I guess a bit of the unknown, you don't know what Test Match Rugby is really like until you get out there, but you know, I think uh, you know, playing for the Wallabies has always been a dream, you know, as cliche as it is, and to get the opportunity and then have a good win was, was awesome. Four years on, how do you think you're a different player to the player in 18? Uh, I, I obviously think in time your core skills develop. Uh, you know, I probably think I ran the ball a little bit more back then because my pass or kick probably wasn't up to the skill it was now. Um, I guess I've developed in leadership to a certain degree, being a captain at the Waratahs, and you know, as you do over time, I guess you develop your skills. So, um, yeah, I'd like to think I've developed, uh, skills developed about five times there, but yeah, myself as a player. Nick said that clearly, um, well, well, there's obviously a lot of rotation as well, and he said that it's probably the highest, you know, just position in the wall is a lot of depth there. As one of those three vying for that position, how do you guys view that competition? <coughs> yeah, obviously the competition's pretty red hot at the moment. Uh, Nick and Tate both playing really good games. Tate against the Scots and uh, and Whitey over the weekend. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with the rotation before. Me and Nick Nick Phipps used to do it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think we've got a luxury that we've got we've got really good halfbacks in the country uh, and are desperate to play footy. Take us into what the nine who's not playing is doing on the sideline. I know you guys have been running messages um, throughout to help the other two. Can you talk us through what you guys are seeing down there? Yeah, so I think uh, obviously nine and ten's usually really involved with game plan and strategy. Uh, they're pretty across the detail and usually have a pretty good rugby knowledge. So what they do is have one of us, uh, one who can deliver good messages and know what they're talking about, um, and two, that can just stay involved in the game and reads the game pretty well and can also send messages back up to the box if they see anything happening. So uh, I think that's sort of been the, the idea around that. There's a couple of TARS guys who have yet to, to get their test cap debut in Mark and Ben. Can you talk through how their tour has been and would you love to see them get a crack this week? Yeah, I, I think uh, Marky and, uh, and Benny had a great year. Um, performed really well at Ose. I thought that was a really good tournament. Um, and you saw guys benefit from that. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I'm unsure of the team, but I'd love to see those two guys get a game, um, get their first cap for the Wallabies. Would be awesome. You've got Donner, who's a really silky uh, playmaker, great catch pass, long kick in him. You've got Marky, who is a real aerial threat um, and dangerous one on one. So I'm sure if they got their opportunity, they'd be they'd be they'd be awesome. How would you best sum up the mood from the guys a couple of days on from that France result? Is it still? upset at the field or a few days later you're seeing the positive results pretty good performance? Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit. Obviously, I think everyone's still disappointed by that result um, since we dominated a lot of the game and put ourselves definitely in a position to win it. Uh, but there were def definite pos positives from that game. You know, I think that length of the field try, Ren's be pretty happy with. It's sort of his, uh, his bunny of that. And, you know, to do that on a stage like that against such a quality team is impressive. And, to match their forward pack too. I thought we did a great job throughout the night. It was just disappointing, sort of that last five minutes we let it slip. Um, but definitely seeing the positives in that in that game. A high for Lalakai finishing that playoff and then coming off with an injury head at any home, tough life for him. Yeah, a real tough one for La. Um, he had to score a try like that and then have a stress fracture in, in his leg is really disappointing. And he's starting to play some really good footy uh, and getting an opportunity. So. Disappointing for La, but obviously, you know, I know he'll train hard. He'll be in a really, really good position next year, uh, and he'll be good to go. So, is he and Tom coming on very late in that piece? What was that like getting into that cauldron at the start of France? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty hectic. You know, uh, eighty thousand screaming French fans. It was. Um, yeah, it was. It was awesome to come on the field late in the game. But as Jake said before, it was um, yeah, pretty disappointing last sort of five minutes where we pretty much had it. We thought we had it in the bag, and then. 
yeah, just um, you know, a few errors on our behalf, and um, yeah, we let them back in the game. So you know, it was great to get on the field, but yeah, obviously disappointing with the result. How are you relishing your time back in a gold jersey, mate? Yeah, it's awesome. Like um, I've been in and out sort of the last last year or so, and my last test was in uh, in uh, England last year against England. So uh, you know, it's great to be back playing in Europe. It's you know, it's the home of rugby. It's where rugby was invented and. You know, there's always packed stadiums, 80,000 people each week, so it's, yeah, it's awesome to be back. The different pods and groups in a rugby team, and the, the props, their own little family at the moment, talk us through the dynamic of that, <coughs> that crew on tour. Yeah, it's been, a, it's, there's, a, there's nine of us, so there's, um, there's a few getting around, and it's, um, you know, they've been awesome. You know, front rows are, you know, they're different, they're different to most of the other players in the team, where, where they're sort of the bigger boys, and... Um, yeah, we're sort of the laughable guys of the group, so it's it's been great to get around um, some new guys as well, and I haven't played with guys like Sam Talakai in ten years since I was at club footy, so it's been awesome to get amongst them and yeah, see how they do things. Anything online, guys? Mel or Nate? Um, yeah, I just had a follow up one um, for Jake about um, the rotation. Do you feel like obviously you've played a lot of tests now, but? Um, do you feel like maybe this one's going to have a little bit of extra pressure on you? Do you sort of take it, like approach that it is, you know, your big chance, I guess, to make an impression starting? I mean, you have to start it before, but you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like you're auditioning, I suppose. Uh, not really. I think if you look back two games ago, I started two games against the All Blacks. So, um, yeah, uh, I guess that's the way you could look at it. I just see it as another opportunity to play well. Um, you know, so uh, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not too focused about the rotation and thinking this is my last opportunity. Uh, I need to prepare well uh, because Italy are going to be a good, uh, good opposition and you know, play some good footy. And I, obviously, we're not sure who's starting at ten, but is it is it hard on is it tough on Bernard to have a different halfback every week? Uh, do you feel like you guys have to, or does it matter? Do you all kind of train the same, so it doesn't really make too much difference who's there. Yeah, I think we, uh, yeah, we train, you know, copious amounts of hours a week, uh, and they sort of mix up the teams a little bit. So, you know, for example, I played with Dono uh, for the last two, three years. I played with Bernard for four or five years, and me and Noah started a multiple amount of tests together. So, yeah, you get a pretty good feel for guys at training. Uh, it's not just a game where you end up with a nine and ten combination. You train throughout the week, so you get pretty familiar with the guys. Has um, uh, Dave sort of said that, I mean, does he want to bend down a starting combination? Is that, like, before too long and then use that one sort of all in all the games next year? Is, is that sort of his plan that he's sort of conveyed to you guys? Or it's still pretty open-ended? Yeah, it's still pretty open. I, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, all I do know is we've got a luxury at nine. Uh, we've got three guys or two other guys who can start. Um, and like I touched on earlier, I played some really good rugby in the first two games. So that stuff's really out of my control. I need to focus on playing well this weekend and you know, whatever decision Dave makes, um, that'll be the, the decision, so be it. I guess this is for either guy, but I mean, you look at those two tries the front scored, it came in that sort of last five minutes of each half. When you look at sort of where this team needs to go to compete with the best, you think just that kind of executing for that those last moments of the half is just that <coughs> key thing that needs to improve heading forward. And I guess the follow up would be sort of have you identified maybe like a key area that's just been missing in that regard? I don't think it was necessarily that's like an ongoing issue that in the back ends of both halves, you no, know, we've been quite good in that in earlier games in the year. I just think that was something that happened in that game. It's not necessarily you know, an issue throughout all the games. But, you know, in saying that, we have spoken about working on our consistency throughout games, not just, you know, at the start of games or at the back end of halves. It's, um, you know, throughout the full 80 minutes. And, you know, I think, you know, probably one thing we're working on is getting a full 80-minute performance, which we, you know, haven't seen yet this year. And, you know, we're really striving towards that. But, yeah, I don't think it's a specific thing in terms of, you know, the back ends of halves. It's more about throughout the full 80 minutes. Hey Tom, um, uh, sorry Mel, uh, do you want to go Mel? No? Um, Tom, uh, Tony LR had spoken a bit last week about how he hadn't kind of hit the heights that he was looking to, um, but then he came out and had a stormer on the weekend. Like, what's been your perspective of him and kind of how he's kind of built up over the season and what are you noticing and what are you learning from him, I guess? 
Yeah, I guess Nella's, uh, he's one of a kind. He's, you know, 135 kilos and he's about as tall as I am. And, you know, he's one of the best athletes I've ever played with. So he's, uh, he's a different beast, but, you know, just the way he went about his work on the weekend, you know, you could just tell he was, he came out there, he was relaxed. He was, uh, you could see he had a smile on his face in that first five minutes. And that's, that's when you know Ted Nella's playing his best footy when he's, when he's relaxed, when he's enjoying himself. And, you know, you saw how that first scrum, that was, you know, that was, that was quite impressive sitting on the bench watching that. So, you know, I'm so happy that he's, uh, he's back to playing his best footy and, you know, it's, good. it's, a, it's a scary prospect for the, for the rest of the tour. Had, had you kind of noticed that that had been missing a bit, that, that kind of glint in his eye and that, uh, you know, that mindset that he had or w had he been able to kind of keep that from everyone? Oh, it's sort of been hard for me for, uh, you know, I've been in and out of the squad, so I haven't really seen him day to day. But, uh, yeah, I guess... That's something that you know only he would ever know. Um, you know, it's hard looking outside in to see whether he's, you know, um, you know whether he's you know really enjoying the game or whether he's you know prep feels right in his prep. So um, it's, yeah, definitely something that's hard to comment on from the outside in. But you know, from the from the weekend, you could definitely see that you know that the spark was back in. You know, hopefully he can bring that for the last three games. Thanks, and, and you obviously had a run to twenty eighteen <laughs> and then a bit of a break. What? How have you changed as a player over that period coming back to doing what you're doing now? Like what kind of things have changed in your game or in your your kind of approach to, to the sport? Yeah, I suppose it's um, you know, having a couple of season end injuries after 2018 um, certainly put rugby into perspective and you know I think it's you know allowed me sort of take a take a step back and have a look and you know, notice that you know rugby's not not everything in life and that you know, I think that's really enjoyed, made, made me enjoy my time coming back into the Wallaby squad, you know, I get to enjoy, you know, every game because, you know, I always know that, um, you know, an injury could be, you know, right next to, uh, on the next day. So um, it's really made me enjoy my time and, you know, just appreciate every game that I get when I'm back here. And away we go. Execution to perfection. The All Blacks lay down the challenge. Desperation dive. Oh, Addy Sapphire. 